first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, thank you for letting me be on this panel today with so many other incredible people. Um, and thank you all for being here. Um, so my name is Gitanjali Rao. I'm a little bit younger than everyone else on here. I'm about to be a senior in high school. Um, so I'm 16 years old, and I've really just spent my time learning. Um, so I just like to say, you know, before anything else, I look towards problem solving as a means for the way that I look at the world around me. I recognize a problem and I try and come up with ways to solve it rather than, I guess, waiting around for someone else to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so over the past three years, my work has kind of been split into multiple different areas. One is my own research and innovations that I come up with. The second being, I guess, almost like an advocacy side of things and trying to help other students recognize their potential as well. So within the research side, um, I've worked, again, through a plethora of different fields, one of which was my device to help detect for lead in drinking water, which probably garnered the most recognition. It's called Tethys, and it uses carbon nanotube sensor technology to provide almost instantaneous results on your phone. Um, I also created a device called Epione to help diagnose for opioid addiction at an early stage. And once research is complete, that aims to be the first ever clinical tool to diagnose for addiction. It uses a protein-based biomarker indicator in your body. Um, um, with a gene that we all have called the mu opioid receptor. And it's able to form this correlation to an addiction status. And then again, send all the results to your phone just because I love building apps so much. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also work very closely with UNICEF to build an anti-cyberbullying service, which is almost like a block of code or an API that can be added to a variety of different front ends. And it's built in a way that it's a non-punitive approach towards bullying. So think of it as spell check, but for cyberbullying. And it adds the cyberbullying filter your capability and a lot of the different things that you can do. So when you send an email, similar to how you wouldn't want to have grammar issues in it, you can also check for any, I guess, unconscious insults that you may add to it, because it happens more than you think. So yeah, that's a little bit about the research side. Uh, right now, I flew in late last night because I'm doing research in Cambridge at the Koch Institute, um, looking at integrated cancer research with nanoscience. So super interesting stuff there. And we'll be moving to infectious diseases and how that looks in the world around us. I'm kind of just exploring everything around me to figure out what exactly I want to do beyond high school. Now, that's my research side of things. <laughs> um, I have a completely different side of things where I focus on connecting with students across the world because that's something that's very near and dear to my heart. I'm very passionate about influencing the current education system into incorporating innovation and problem solving into every single thing that we do. Mm. And I think that's such a crucial part of what we're doing. We talk about science, social studies, math, English classes, but we never truly talk about its application in the real world as well. And that's exactly where outreach comes in for students. So I run these innovation workshops and I've worked with about 68,000 students across 42 countries over the past two years, um, whether that's virtually or in person. It's taught, me, it's taught me a lot. I hope I've taught them a lot. Um, I've also created a book to go alongside it because I can't mentor every single kid in this universe, but I'd love for them to take away the same things. But each student comes out of these workshops with an idea as well as a process that they can use to take it into the real world. And one that's very near and dear to my heart is working with the Kahuma refugee camp in Kenya, who is a group of these students who have ideas, who have a goal, who have honestly a very, very big sense of passion in what they're doing and coming up with ideas and innovating for the future. But they have a lack of resources and a lack of guidance. So I've worked with them, um, helped them bring their ideas to life, help mentor them to apply them into challenges, receive fundraising for a lot of the things that they're doing as well. Um, and along with that, I fundraise for them to have iPads, laptops, books, um, furniture, and all sorts of other materials to bring their ideas to life. And I truly recognize the potential in students. And I always like to say that everything that I do across my research, across my workshops, is rooted at this very sole idea of empathy. Um, I think kindness is really what brings my visions to life, and it should bring everyone else's visions to life as well, because that's truly what's changing our world for the better. But, you know, I have no intentions of stopping here. I have more to do. I want to do more. Um, so, yeah, keep following my work in the next couple of years. But I appreciate your time. Thank you. Wow. <laughs>